Hey, uh, I'm in the woods. Elden Ring is secretly the sequel to Bloodborne. Who asked? Well, nobody. Bloodborne takes place in a town called Yarnum. Throughout the course of the game, we learn that the inhabitants of this world are controlled. Their entire world is governed by these things called Great Ones. They learn this mad truth through an event that I'll get to later. But they're real wacky fellows. Take a look at this one. Oh boy. Elden Ring takes place in the Lands Between. The Lands Between what exactly is something that we'll talk about later. In it, you are a Tarnished, whose goal is to mend and restore the Elden Ring and eventually take your place as Elden Lord. However, if you're paying attention throughout the game, you will realize that the Lands Between also has a mad truth, not unlike Yarnum. The Elden Ring, or eventually what would become it, was sent here in a golden star from the cosmos by something that is known as an Outer God. This Outer God is something beyond our comprehension and, again, beyond the stars. It is known as the Greater Will. And I really hope that sounds familiar, because if it doesn't, then I've already lost you. But hey, look. Pretty fire. A core tenet of this theory is that the Outer Gods of the Lands Between and the Great Ones of Yarnum are of a similar ilk. We're gonna talk about this lady now. This is Queen Merica the Eternal. She acts as a vessel for the greater will and ruler of the lands between. She is a voice for the outer god. She did so seemingly willingly up until her favorite son Godwin was killed at the hands of the Black Knife assassins, an act that was ordered by her stepdaughter, Ronnie, and possibly by Merica herself, but I'll get back to that later. Following this tragedy, Merica shattered the Elden Ring, causing the Greater Will to imprison her within the Erd Tree. Thus begins the start of the game, where her demigod children are all squabbling for parts of the Elden Ring, and you, as a Tarnished, have returned to the Lands Between to Banjo-Kazooie style, collect all of them and put it all together. Take your throne as the Elden Lord. <laughs> Let's go back to Bloodborne for a second. In the game, as a hunter, you meet and fell many great ones. This is the goal given to you by Garman, this goofy wheelchair fellow. Well, he's not in a wheelchair in this, in this picture, but trust me, for the most, most of the game, he's in a wheelchair. He is one of the first hunters, and as you learn towards the end of your journey, he is trapped in the hunter's dream by a great one known as the Moon Presence, or, or Flora, if you, if you wanna get real cute with it. Store this in your brain, because it is also important. If you've played both games and you're following along here, you might be confused as to why there aren't outer gods roaming all around the lands between like there are great ones in Yarnum. I think this is because of how exactly each peoples went about discovering their eldritch truths. In Bloodborne, there is a race of ancient beings known as the Tumerians, who discovered the eldritch truth long before the Yarnumites did. They died off somehow, but through their discovery and the tombs they left behind, the Yarnumites eventually caught up. They began consuming the blood of Great Ones through various means to ascend and evolve, which in one of the endings of the game, where you consume three thirds of an umbilical cord, eventually you succeed in you know, consuming the umbilical cords as one does and becoming a little baby great one, little baby squid. In Elden Ring, the general populace is unaware of the true nature of the greater will. They see it more as an abstract entity, a biblical capital G God, not something that you can hunt and make bleed, but a benevolent force guiding them towards grace. Now, before you get at me in the comments about the two fingers or the three fingers or the Elden Beast being, you know, outer gods, they're not. Those are all vessels or vassals of the greater will. At no point in the game do we actually see a physical manifestation of any outer god, let alone the greater will. We hear about them through the frenzied flame ending or down in Mogwin Palace, but we never actually, you know, meet one. We don't go up and say, hey, how's it going, Greater Will? That doesn't, that, that doesn't happen. So if this is such an abstract entity, how is it that Queen Merica became its vessel? How is it that Queen Merica became Queen Merica? We know that Garamond became locked away in the dream because he was hunting Great Ones. He sort of came face to face with them and was punished as a result of that. But like I just mentioned, Nobody in the Lands Between has ever come face to face with an Outer God. Seems like you need to know the Greater Will pretty well or have some insight that other people don't to, you know, become its vessel. And the answer for America is, well, I can't tell you. I can tell you that there wasn't some kind of presidential election where she campaigned on free Shabriri grapes for all who voted for her. Actually, now that I think about it, I... Th that could have happened, I have no way of knowing. The point is, there is no direct text that explains her origins other than the fact that she is a Newman. Whatever that means. I'm going back to my stump now.
Most of the people and demigods that you meet throughout your journey in the Lands Between are natives to the Lands Between. In fact, you, as a Tarnished, by your very nature, are descended from those who were exiled from it. Marika, however, is not a native. She is a Newman. So, what the hell is a Newman? Well, I got good news for you. We got two item descriptions, a whole two. Okay, so, according to the Newman rune, the Newman are said to have come from outside the Lands Between and are in fact of the same stock as Queen Marika herself. So that's how we know that Marika is a Newman. Other than that, we have the description of the character template of a Newman, which reads, The face of the Newman, supposed descendants of denizens of another world, long lived but seldom born. The reason this is important is because this is the only evidence we have of a character coming from outside of the Lands Between. Everyone else in the game is a descendant of Marika, or is otherwise native to the Lands Between. In fact, the only other evidence that we have of a world outside of the Lands Between is in a place called the Land of Reeds which is a place of clearly Eastern influence that has been long locked in a miserable civil war. We'll talk about that later. Remember the two Marians from earlier? How they discovered the Eldritch Truth in Yarnum far before the Yarnumites ever did? Well, what if, and here's the big jump here, boys. What if the Newmans, the people from an outside world, also discovered a similar Eldritch Truth? The Newmans, in their world of their own, discovered the Greater Will all by themselves, just like the two Marians did. Well, they probably discovered something known as the One Great, but that's the whole other can of worms. I'm not gonna get into that right now, or probably ever. Maybe. Marika was taken from the Lands Between by the Greater Will when it was in need of a new vessel. A strong Newman leader becomes a strong vessel for the Lands Between, a land that the Greater Will has been fostering for time immemorial. The denizens of the Lands Between don't know the true nature of the Greater Will because there's no physical evidence in their world of the Greater Will or any Outer God existing. The Newmans didn't leave a tomb behind because they aren't from here. They're from a different world. A world outside this land. A world that this land stands between. That I really tried to make that work, um, but Anyway, we're, the point of it, we're, ta we're talking about the, the we're, we're talking about the lands between and what that actually means. Now, I I'm gonna go over there. It's widely understood that the Great Ones of Bloodborne are heavily inspired by the cosmic horrors of H.P. Lovecraft's many works. These beings exist outside of time, space, and human understanding. Their goals, motives, and bodies cannot be comprehended by those lesser. If we accept that the Great Ones of Yarnum and the Outer Gods of the Lands Between are in the same family, then it's not too far-fetched to say that these games take place in the same universe. These beings control the very fabric of the realities that they exist outside of. It's, it's kind of like how, um, in Pokemon, Dialga is space and Palkia is time. I don't know if anybody knows Pokemon here. That's a different game. The paltry I'm pitching here is that the Lands Between and Yarnum both are pocket dimensions that exist within a larger shared universe that is controlled by Great Ones and Outer Gods alike. And if you think it's too far-fetched to say that pocket dimensions, which is a very like sci-fi concept, you know, a universe existing within another universe, it, you know, if you think that it's crazy that those exist in these games, I would counter with The Hunter's Dream, or The Round Table Hold, hell, even The Nexus from Demon's Souls, or The Things Betwixt from Dark Souls 2, or Ulusil and The Abyss from Dark Souls, or all of the painted worlds across the many games. These are all places that exist outside of a base understanding of time and space. I mean, even the entirety of Yarnum and Bloodborne, with the exception of one cutscene at the end of the game, is a cyclical nightmare perpetuated by Great Ones. Even Elden Ring's Fair Missoula is heavily implied to exist outside of time. I'm gonna make good on another promise real quick. Remember earlier when I talked about the Land of Reeds, the only other place that exists outside of the Lands Between that we know about? It's where this NPC Okina is from and where the Samurai armor set is from. That armor set says, the Land of Reeds has long been locked in a miserable civil war, during which time it has remained alienated from the culture of its many neighbors. Little wonder that the entire nation has succumbed to blood-soaked madness, or so it is said. That description sounds an awful lot like it's describing the third act of Sekiro, where you return to Ashina Castle to find it set ablaze and locked in a civil war. As for the blood-soaked madness, the entire game's plot revolves around the divine blood of Kuro and people searching for its secrets to unlock immortality. Also, the Japanese name of the land that Sekiro takes place in, Ashina, translates in English to read. 
you might already be familiar with some of what I'm talking about here. The idea that all of From Software's games since Demon's Souls are interconnected in some way. People have been piecing this together for a while now to form a cohesive timeline. The basic idea being that the old one from Demon's Souls is a great one from Bloodborne. At the end of Demon's Souls, that old one enshrouds its world in a great fog, which eventually fades to reveal Lordran, the world that Dark Souls takes place in. The denizens of Lordran eventually discover the blood of the old one or other great ones and start experimenting on them. They become known as the Tumerians and eventually escape into a painted world of blood to test its full effects. Oh, and also Sekiro happens like over there somewhere. Now, I don't think a linear timeline is exactly correct or appropriate here. We're dealing with cosmic beings that control the very nature of these concepts. So I think something a little more abstract is more appropriate. I propose that Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1 through 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and now Elden Ring all exist within pocket dimensions in a shared universe separated by, perhaps, a great deep fog. After all, at the beginning of your journey through the lands between, you, as a tarnished, return to these lands through a great deep fog which you were exiled to way earlier in this land's history. For more examples of this shared world, look to The Land of Reeds, or Marvelous Chester from Dark Souls, or Old Hunter Yamamura from Bloodborne, or the coincidental nature of the Outer Gods and the Great Ones from both Elden Ring and Bloodborne. All of this is evidence that these games take place in a greater universe that is controlled by something outside of it. Something like a Great One. Something like an Outer God. Or, of course, all of this is just evidence and examples of developers having fun with references and sharing an enjoyment of the same core tenets of storytelling. The problem with the theory that I've just tried to sell you on is that it's largely immune to criticism. It's just a lot of speculation. It's like simulation theory. You ever heard of simulation theory that we're all living in a simulation? It's foolproof because, you know, if, if, if we were living in a simulation, the simulation would have to be sophisticated enough to that, you know, we couldn't know that we were living in a simulation anyway. The point is, like, I believe that because why not? It makes the world more fun. You could definitely poke holes here, though. My idea that the Newmen are a people from outside this world that discovered the truth of the Outer Gods, but you know, before anyone else, kind of stops making sense when you consider where you actually get Newman's runes in the game. Half of them are found on corpses near where demigods live, which makes sense. Merica is not the only Newman that we know of in the Lands Between. The Black Knife Assassins, who were responsible for killing Godwin, are also Newman and are said to be very close to Merica herself, which is it's also why I said earlier that Merica probably had something to do with the death of her favorite son. But again, can of worms, different video. The other half of the Newman runes, however, drop from queen ants in the deep root depths. Now, runes in Elden Ring represent the latent guidance of the Erd Tree. Every being has runes inside of them. It represents their soul for the most part. Even big ol' ants. Why, however, Queen Ants would drop Newman runes and not Black Knife Assassins would is beyond me. Honestly, the only reason I can think of of why they would drop Newman runes is because these big ants and Merica herself are both queens. Yep. Stuff like this and the rats dropping rune arcs in this game as a reference to rats dropping humanities in previous games uh, is pretty good evidence that the FromSoft devs just kind of like to have fun with their canon sometimes. And that's great. Another counterpoint you could make here is that it's possible that Merica herself was living in the lands between before the Greater Will chose her as her vessel. In fact, you can start the game as a Newman, like I said earlier. So who's to say that you, as a tarnished Newman, are not a descendant of Merica and the rest of the Newmans that live here, just like she was a descendant of the original Newmans that came over here from wherever the hell Newmans are from. However, to counter that counterpoint, you could say that Merica and her Black Knife assassins did come here at the behest of the Greater Will at the beginning of the Age of the Erd Tree, and all of the Tarnished who chose the Newman character template at the start of the game are just descendants of them. Or there's some unreliable narrator nonsense going on with the very few item descriptions I've been using as evidence here. The Black Knife assassins being Newmans and also being really good buds with Merica, in the item description, those are rumors. It just says that they're rumored to be Newmans and they're rumored to be really close to Merica. I'm treating that as fact because it helps my argument, but it is very possible that's all hogwash. Fact is, I don't know, and neither do you. 
probably, unless you're a Miyazaki, I guess. But it is a lot of fun to speculate beyond the facts of item descriptions, dialogue, and environmental storytelling that is always in these games treated as the holy text. FromSoft likes to leave their lore and story purposefully vague so that videos like this can exist. People can talk about it with their friends, theories, and debate can spark out of their games. Obviously, shared universe pocket dimension nonsense is not a wholly original idea by any means, but it is still fun to think about in the context of these games, especially when now with Elden Ring, we have gotten some of the strongest evidence here in its use of outer gods and other worlds. So yeah, Elden Ring is Bloodborne 2. Pretty flimsy theory that relies on a lot of speculation. Probably not true. Unless, of course, you consider that there is a talisman that you cannot currently obtain in the game called the Entwining Umbilical Cord. So yeah, everything I just said about this theory not being true is wrong. Fuck you. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's not something usual that I release on this channel, not being about a comic book, but hey, this hasn't been a comic book channel for a while now, so get with it. There's a list of credits for the people who helped me in the description. Please check them all out, especially my friend Kevin at Kevin's underscore computer on Twitter. He did the art for the thumbnail and is honestly extremely talented and also helped me film this. So check him out. Thanks guys. Bye.